action. Okay, so in this video we're going to show how to take mandibular x-rays. A lot of people get confused with taking x-rays on a horse's head because there's so much overlap of different structures. And if you have a lot of experience with it, it's actually pretty straightforward. But if you don't or you don't do them all the time, it can be a little bit confusing as far as what's the best view and how to do it. So in this video, in a few minutes, we're going to show you a few very clear, concise ways to get pretty much all the views you would ever need to get on um, a mandible. So there's a couple principles. Number one, the most important is you always want to use a block to keep the mouth open. Pretty much that applies to any x-rays of the teeth. You should never really do dental radiographs without a block in the mouth. If you're not doing those, you're basically not able to isolate structures very well and, and the quality of your radiographs is already limited by a, a pretty big percentage. So let me find that block here. So this is a block that we use. You can use any block of wood, but you want to put something between the incisors. Um, all right, so what are the three views? There's three views that we use here. We've got a, a mandible right here. And let's say that we're trying to image the, the horse's left side, so right here. So the number three quadrant. There's a couple of views here. We'll put the, Dr. Leducer in here. So we've got one view where um, we would just simply put the plate right here. Always put the plate as close to the horse's mouth as you can. Always put a block in the mouth, remember that. And then we simply shoot in a ventral to dorsal fashion. Um, depending on the age of the horse, you, if they're younger or older, you may need to go steeper, uh, but you can adjust that and, and see and what that's going to do is it's going to put this quadrant is going to get shifted up. So this is going to get shifted up so you won't be able to see these teeth very well. And then the apical region of these teeth will get cast down on the plate and so you'll get a good image of that. Okay, so that's probably the most common view. Now something to keep in mind is if you look at these teeth, they are diverging. They're not like two parallel sets of tracks. So they're going away from each other. So if I'm putting this over here this way, if I'm perfectly perpendicular to the plate, I'm actually not going to be getting what we call the interproximal spaces, so the spaces in between the teeth, because everything's going to be oblique. So if I want to get the space in between these teeth, I have to have a slight caudal to rostral. Different people will tell you different things, but just you don't need to even complicate it. Just a few degrees caudal to rostral will get you into that interproximal space, okay? So um, maybe we'll tilt it all this way and you can kind of see. So if I was straight perpendicular here, where my arm is relative to the plate, we would have a hard time getting into spaces. But if I go a bit like this, it's at a little bit more of an angle, that is going to match the interproximal spaces. So that's, that's an important concept. So ventral to dorsal, slightly caudal to rostral oblique is number one. There's another view that's really fantastic, and that's where we put the plate underneath, and then we're gonna take the generator, and we're gonna shoot down. So we're still trying to shoot, let's say this number three tooth here, but here we're gonna put the plate underneath, and we're gonna shoot down this way, and that's gonna isolate these roots as well. Uh, you can go about 45 degrees, something like that, and that's gonna give you a different view. Um, both views are helpful. We've got a horse here that's sedated that has mandibular swelling, so we're going to show you that. There's another view that is also helpful, and that's what's called the offset dorsal view. So what we'll do here is picture that the skull is like this. We'll come a little bit closer with the camera. So what we're going to do is we're going to excurt the mandible out of our way. A lot, sometimes if it's a six or a seven, you may be able to excurt the mandible this way and shoot straight down. Um, but sometimes because the upper teeth are so wide, you just have to excurt the mandible to the center and then shoot your beam down through here. That can be a helpful view sometimes if you're trying to look for distortions in a buckle to lingual direction. Um, and so that's, that's also a nice view. So. What we'll do is now, we'll show you those views of uh, what it looks like on a horse life. And one more view that I did that I need to mention here, it's a little bit more advanced, but if you're doing quite a bit of dentistry, it's really helpful. 
The views we showed right here were mostly if you're trying to image the clinical uh, or the reserve crown and the roots of the tooth, but occasionally we want to image the more occlusal aspect of the tooth or some of the more occlusal aspects of the peritoneal spaces. And so for that, what we do is we do a little bit different type of view where if the plate is here, we're going to actually bring the generator in. We might need to come a little closer, but we're going to shoot down. So again, you have your, the block in the mouth, so the mouth is open. You would have your cassette a little bit low uh, like this because you're going to be shooting down. But since I'm holding it here, I'll show the beam would actually come down this way. So you've got the mouth is open, the beam is coming down. This part of the mandible is going to drop, so you're not going to see that very well. It's going to be overlapped. But what happens is as the beam comes down, the occlusal aspect of these teeth over here on the number four quadrant is going to get elevated and projected higher on the cassette, so you'll be able to see these parts over here. So this is more of an occlusal surface view. Sometimes it's helpful for looking at the angles of some of the teeth or the periodontal spaces in that region. Uh, so those four views, and we'll show you how to do those on a horse, are really, that's about all you would ever really need on a mandible. So we've got a horse here, he's a little bit jumpy and, um, and a little bit wobbly because he takes a lot of sedation. So we're gonna do our best to show you on a live scenario how we could image all those different parts. But here we can see we have a big lump on the jaw. Uh, and so this is the area of interest. Now it's very important, anytime you have a horse that has a lump on the jaw or sudden acute difficulty eating, something like that, we always wanna make sure that there's not a hairline fracture that's not displaced of the mandible or the maxilla. So in these cases, it's good to take a radiograph before you put a block in the mouth, before you put a speculum on, uh, because if there is a fracture, the last thing we want to do is add more pressure and displace it even more. So um, here what we're going to do is we put the block in the mouth out and we already made sure this wasn't a fracture. So we've got a block in here and we're going to take a couple of our views. All right, so we've got the block in the mouth and I, I like to use this dental halter just like this. What I'll do is I'll offset it a little bit like that and pull the head up this way just a little bit. And then we're going to come over, over here. Now remember, I'm going to be slightly caught on the rostral to account for that, the separation of the, the quadrants as we go further back in the mouth. And then I'm going to bleep down here. He's a little bit mobile, a lot mobile. So we've got to account for, for that. There we go. We're going to do one more. So I'm going, if you start straight lateral, we're going to drop down ventral about 45 degrees or so. Then slight caudal to rostral. And let's take a look at the image that we got on the screen here. So, oops, that's kind of... We've got some weird artifact. Uh, we'll go back to that first one where we had the motion and see. So you can see how we have some motion here, but it's still a very good diagnostic radiograph. We can see the bone enlargement. We can see a little drain track here. We can see that we appear to have an abscess on the number seven tooth. Remember, it's normal for the eight and the six to have this appearance here because there's a lot of soft tissue down here, a lot of young developing pulp, so it's an eruption cyst. So you don't want to confuse eruption cysts for dental pathology. Um, but this, we can definitely see a drain track going to the number seven. So we're just going to repeat that view since we had a little bit of motion. And let's see what we've got here. Okay, so that's a very nice radiograph. Now what we're going to do is we're going to show you the view where we put the plate underneath the jaw and where we do essentially a um, dorsal to ventral oblique, almost like a dorsal ventral 
oblique. So it's important to have the plate towards that side because the beam is going to get carried that way. And I always like to have everything parallel with the, the shape of the jaw here. There we go, like that. So we want the plate just like that, okay, so that the plate follows the shape of the jaw. And then we're going to come over here. And you're going to see that's going to give us a different type of view of the same region. And de depending on the pathology, the different views can give us different information. You can see on this particular horse, that view is not as helpful as the other one was diagnostically. But occasionally this view can be much more helpful. So we just wanted to show you guys that because I often like to do both of those, uh, especially if I have any kind of questions as far as surgical planning or diagnosis. I, those are, are really the most helpful. Now what we'll do is we'll show you how to do the offset dorsal ventral and we'll show you how to take the occlusal surface view. All right. Okay, so here the side of interest again is the number four quadrant. So we're going to slide the plate a little bit that way and I'm going to offset the jaw to, to where the horse's jaw mandible is going to the horse's left and now we're going to slide the plate over that direction. There we go. And then we're going to come dorsal to ventral. Sometimes you have to use a little bit more technique because there's a little bit more to go through on this view. He's still moving just a little bit. Yeah, he's, we have some motion on him, but you can see how we've offset the mandible here. And it's also helpful, you can see how what, nice we have the um, upper sixes and sevens. We're not at the right angle to get to seven and eight. Depending on which tooth we're trying to get, we may have to change our angle. So we're going to reshoot this one because we've got some motion. Okay, so here it's still not the best view because he's a little bit mobile. You can see how well this view works, for example, to get the, the number six here. But we can still see some enlargement of the mandible. Here's the mandible, the number four quadrant, and we can see the enlargement right here. Um, so this is a nice view from time to time when you have issues in a lingual to buckle plane. So now we'll do the last view where we're going to get the occlusal surface region. So remember on this view, we're going to open the mouth. The mouth you want it as open as you can get anytime you're doing this view because you're shooting the beam through, through that gap. And so you want as much room as you can there. And then we're going to slightly angle. about 15 to 30 degrees, something like that. And here we can see the caps. This is a young horse and we can see that occlusal surface very nice. Now if we angle just a little bit more, we would be able to see a little bit more into it. So if you can do those, those four views, that will basically get you all of the information you can get radiographically on a mandible. Now keep in mind the most important thing is always the oral exam and the history and then combining those with your radiographic findings. Never rely only on radiographic findings unless it's something very obvious or black and white, no pun intended. You want to take in the whole picture always.